Pokemon. It's a children's game where you take your favorite Pokemon, overlevel them to the point where bad matchups don't matter, and one-shot everything in your path to victory. At least that's how I played it as a kid. As I grew older, I found it pretty boring, so I started doing Nuzlocks. Nuzlocks is a way to play Pokemon with a self-enforced rule set, where you can only catch one Pokemon per area, if the Pokemon dies, you have to release them, and if all the Pokemon in your party die, you gotta start over. This worked for a while, but even that became kind of easy. So, I decided to make my own Pokemon game that's harder than any Pokemon game you've ever played before. Well, I, I didn't actually create it. The godfather of Pokemon ROM hacks, Drayano, did. And my moderator, Yeti Apocalypse, changed all the sprites, so it was me in the game and, and my friends and, and viewers who are the rival trainers. It's a game that no one has ever played before because this is the first time it was ever created. This is Pokemon Platinum, but it has smarter AI, more secret battles, fairy-type Pokemons. Fucking fairy-type Pokemons are in a Gen 4 video game. My goal wasn't just to beat this game, it was to beat it while doing a Nuzlocke. And these were the rules I followed. I started my journey March 14th, 2021. This was Pokemon Mogul Platinum Ludlock. Did I mention that every time you white it out, you had to restart the run? Because that, that happened a, a lot. Like, you know, too much. Yeah, that's great. This is so fucking dumb. A level 24, Ariato sweeped my team. Why? I hate this Ludlock. The only run that was actually close to beating the game was my 10th attempt. I had nine failed attempts before I had anything that resembled success. In fact, the 10th run made it all the way to the Elite Four. But I got a bit unlucky on some of the early battles, and my genius plan was how I was going to beat the game. <sighs> Alright, so Azrevire is my starting Pokemon. He's gonna go out. He's gonna use Captivate. Captivate sharply lowers special attack, so Espeon will be minus two. He'll have to use the Focus Ash. He'll live, but that's fine. Then I'm gonna switch into Metagross. Metagross is gonna use a Light Screen. Light Screen's gonna make it like minus four, basically, or actually even worse, I think. And then after light screening, I'm going to switch into uh, my Sceptile. My Sceptile is going to use six sword stances and then a substitute. So we've, we've had two turns. This is the second turn of Reflect. It didn't work. Fuck this game. During all this, I had been naming Pokemon after one of my subscribers. So like every time I catch, let's say a Pidgey, I would find a subscriber in my Twitch chat and, and name it after them. If their Pokemon died in battle, I would have to release that Pokemon, but I would add a twist. I would also ban the person the Pokemon was named after. After just a few failed runs, over 200 people in my Twitch chat were banned. And if you don't know, when you ban someone, they can't subscribe to you. This was 200 people who were giving me $5 every month. I started this journey in March. It was June. Not only could they not talk in chat, but also I was losing thousands of dollars because I couldn't beat this game. I was tired of losing, so I decided to do a marathon stream with one goal in mind, beat the game. Now, the game starts out with a rival battle on Route 201. And this went pretty smoothly. At this point, this is my 16th run, and, and I'd done it a few times, so I, I kind of figured it out. I raced my way towards the first gym leader, Tim. I'd figured out that he has a huge weakness. You can just catch a Geodude, spam Defense Curl on the first Pokemon, because his first Pokemon is basically a setup and has no way to attack you. And then, you can just sweep the gym with a Geodude. But I didn't catch any Geodudes. So, I had to do it the old-fashioned way. I got everyone to level 16 and used my Machop to tear through his team. And I forgot that Crandios has Headbutt. So I switched to Ozzy, who's the fastest of any Pokemon on my team, to sweep through 
and this happened. I finally took him out with Ocean, but not without losing two valuable members to my squad. But I was tired of losing, so I kept marching forward. I turned my Eevee into an Espeon and sped towards Valley Windworks, where I'd have my next major challenge, Perugly. Now, if you've ever played Pokemon Platinum, you'll remember this Perugly. It's a member of, of one of Team Galactic's squad, and this Perugly is way better and better than any Perugly you've ever seen. I had a game plan though, which was just hitting him with Yawn, which makes you fall asleep after a turn, and then sweeping without losing any Pokemon. Well, any major Pokemon at least. I was rushing through the game so fast, I forgot about a key battle in a turn of forest, and ended up losing my Starmie and my Bayleaf. But as long as Espeon was safe, I knew I'd be fine. The next gym was a grass gym, and I caught a Beedrill, who I lovingly named Beedrill, who swept the gym without much problem. I mean, you know, you don't really give a lot of respect to bug types, but they're OP. While fighting a random trainer, I lost Ocean from a critical hit. And then I ran into another Team Galactic trainer with Dragon Rage, which does 40 damage. That's it. That's all the move does. It does 40 damage no matter what, which is way too strong this early in the game. To avoid anyone dying, I switched to my Beedrill, who had 41 HP, who could live the hit from Dragon Rage and deliver a killing blow. This is just standard math. <gasps> Heaven gained another angel today. Weirdly enough, the commander gave me almost no issues and I beat Devin with no losses while making my way towards the third gym. And then, I ran into this. <gasps> oh! A shiny Pokemon. Which is the perfect time to explain how Nuzlocke encounters work. Normally, when you go into a new area like Route 201, you have to catch the first Pokemon you run into, unless you've already caught that Pokemon before. That's the duplicate clause. And then, you can look around and try to catch something else. But everyone usually has this one rule. If you run into a shiny, you're allowed to catch it no matter what. Doesn't matter if you've already caught a Pokemon in that area, it doesn't matter about anything of any of the rules, shinies are gold. And that's right, baby, I was allowed to catch this Pokemon. You fucking idiot! You idiot! Ah! It wasn't me, it was a double battle, and the other AI killed the shiny Pokemon. Words cannot express the dissatisfaction I have towards my teammate. But I still had a great squad. Togepi, Espeon, Metacham, Warturtle, Quilovel, and Bibarel. This is OP. Now, this is ROM hack, so it's made to be harder, but it's also made to help you out a little bit. So you get like all the starting Pokemon, they give you a bunch of free Pokemon along your journey to basically make it so it's not impossible. Even then, it turned out that 15 times it was impossible for me, but I was determined that the 16th time would be my time. Sweet 16, baby. I took the strongest team I have had since starting this game, and I was powering through the game. Okay, I forgot about this battle against my rival, Cutie, oh, and it was time to rebuild. <laughs> that sucked. I forgot about this fight completely, and uh, she gave me zero dollars, you fucking asshole. Look, uh, let's just be honest. I get a little impatient when I'm playing this game and, and I can and I can die pretty easily to random trainers, especially when I forget about them. But you have to remember the AI is buffed, so they're, they're making smart moves. It's not because I'm bad at the game. Thankfully, it's actually really easy to catch new Pokemon and level them up. This is probably where I should talk about rare candies. In this ROM hack, I decided to hack in 999 rare candies and you might be thinking to yourself like that well that's cheating you can just level to 99 and then and then sweep through the entire game which is true so i implemented a level cap i would never be a higher level than the next gym leader that way i 
would actually have to use my brain instead of just powering through like I did when I was seven. The only reason I added the rare candies is because it is so boring to sit there and grind while watching random videos Twitch chat gives me on fast forward. It's just incredibly boring. And you have to understand after 16 runs and 200 plus banned people, that would be a lot of extra time. If I didn't have rare candies, I would still be doing this one year later. So it was just a good way to cut down time. And if you've ever wanted to try one of these hard challenges, I would recommend rare candies. It makes it way more fun and there's way less bullshit because grinding, let's be honest, takes zero skill. It just takes time and I'm no longer a teenager. I'm a 26 year old man. I have important things to do. I was ready now for the third gym. I had a water dark type. Yeah, you, you heard that right. For alligator. Again, this is a ROM hack. Things are different. Uh, and I constantly had to tell my chat that yes, there are fairy types. And yes, they did change the typing. And for alligator, as OP as he is, was able to sweep the gym without taking any damage. I stopped my rival Clevin and made my way towards the fourth gym, picking up a Gengar and a Manaphy along the way. Manaphy is a pseudo legendary, so barring it dying, I was gonna crush the rest of the game. This. Okay, I'm doing a little too much setup, I understand, but it, it's, it's, it's comedic the way my life turns out sometimes. And I, I didn't feel too bad about that, because generally I think using legendaries can be kind of cheap. After getting stuck in the gambling side of Twitch for a couple hours, I made it to the fourth gym. Trust me. I'm a fucking expert. Inner flinch is an ability that prevents you from being faked out or flinching. Thus, meaning I'm allowed to use my move. Super effective. Gets him to the red. Two big keynotes here. Two big keynotes. Keynote number one. Uh, uh-oh. I am faster. Keynote number two. Uh-oh. I am smarter. <laughs> okay? Meta Cham down. Next Pokemon up. This is fucking GG No Re. Uh, let's just Blaze Kick. And this might kill him if he hits himself in confusion. If he hits himself in confusion, I am the smartest man alive. <laughs> it doesn't matter! Oh my god. I think Blaze Kick's a higher percent chance to burn rather than 10. I think it might be 30. Maybe like Scald. Or I made that stat up. I don't care. Either way, I win the fucking fight. Should be clean sweeps now. Clean sweeps. <laughs> that was a bit fortunate. I was a bit fortunate there. I am. I can. I can safely say that. I can safely say that. Let's leech seed because I, I don't think I'm gonna kill this guy quickly. Oh. <laughs> Let's just do this. And this is GG now. Burn halves your attack. Payback does do 140, but it's not stab. And he also says burn. So unless he crits. There's no chance it will kill. Uh, let's switch to Espeon. Payback won't do nearly as much now. He might have Guts. <gasps> he does have Guts. Oh no, this is going to kill me. He has Guts. Stupid. Fuck me. Well, I kind of threw that at the end, but we still won. You know, we got it. We got it done, baby. We got it done. This was a brutal fight. Ludwig Sevens for losing Crobat, Espeon, and Roserade. My team comp was getting really thin, so I went on the search for the best Pokemon in all of Mogul Platinum. Magikarp. At level 20, Magikarp evolves into Gyarados, and Gyarados learns a move known as Dragon Dance. And it has Intimidate. Which means it can switch in, lower the attack of the opponent by one, then Dragon Dance to increase the Gyarados' attack and speed, and sweep through every single person. I left the Magikarp in the PC for the fifth gym, and tried sweeping with my Rotom. And then I made the perilous journey to the sixth gym, which was filled with way too many obstacles. But the great thing about Pokemon, and the great thing about myself, is when I make a mistake, I learn from it. I don't make the same mistake twice. If you can't tell, I'm going to cut to a time where I made the same mistake twice. I forgot again about another rival battle, and she took out four of my... Let's just roll, just roll the clip. Hi, Ludwig. Oh, no! 
All right, Ludwig versus Cutie Cinderella, starting Mon Alakazam, which is perfect for me because I'm faster and I left in my crunch. It should one-shot unless she has, for some reason, a focus sash, which she definitely doesn't. Easy start. That's what we needed to come back into this game. Woodhammer, as long as it doesn't crit, won't kill me. He's actually going to die from self-reflected damage. I lost my Gengar, but a lucky critical hit let me get through without too much problem. Gengar was a big loss, though. It's a ghost type, and so I could switch in whenever there was a normal or fighting type Pokemon on my opponent's team, and that doesn't affect ghost types, so I would get a free switch. If you don't know by now, I'm, I'm not playing on the baby mode. See, when you boot up Pokemon, you can either play on switch or set. Switch is like when you kill their Pokemon, they say, Oh, the enemy trainer is bringing out a Blaziken. Would you like to switch? And you can just bring out your water type and roll the other team. That is how babies play. When you actually play against like a friend or something, you play on set. They get the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon to counter you and then you have to switch. So they oftentimes will get a free hit on you. And so having someone that can completely be immune to normal and fighting types is OP. So Ludwig 7 to Young Gar. But we made our way towards the next major fight which was against the leader of Team Galactic, Atrioc. This is my true test. I had Aerodactyl, Venusaur, Empoleon, Magmortar, Porygon, and Rotom. Those were my powerhouses. They covered almost every typing in the game, but losing even one of them would create a huge weakness in my team, and my PC at this point was pretty thin. If you haven't noticed, this isn't really like the Nuzlocke video that Jaden did. You don't get attached to many of my Pokemon, because they're kind of like disposable pieces. They're a bunch of pawns. I'm kind of running this like Lelouch in Code Geass and, or, or, or Ender's Game if you're not a giant fucking weep. I started gaining confidence in my team and DRXX was carrying me through almost every fight with his high speed and attack. I also put a Focus Sash on him so there's no way he would get one shot. If you don't know, a Focus Sash means that if you get hit at max HP, even if it's meant to kill you, you'll live with just one HP left. And since Aerodactyl is super fast and super strong, that means I can usually get two free hits in, which is enough to kill most trainers' Pokemon. And so I made my way towards the seventh gym, and you're probably thinking, well, you always talk about a Pokemon right before it dies. Don't play a cutesy fucking song now. But Bullet Punch is bullshit! I mean, fuck Caesar. I replaced Aerodactyl with Pac-Mon because having a flying type is great to switch in against ground types, kind of like I was talking about with Gengar. My overconfidence, though, when using one Pokemon to negate attacks on switching would soon be a mistake. Next! Every single move it has is special. Er, excuse me, normal or fighting. You literally cannot hit my ghost type. I hope my ghost type Rotom would dodge a fighting move, but that guess led to his death. And the death of my Staraptor. What? What? My PC might seem full, but I lost all of my ghost and flying type Pokemons. And having a diverse team is key, especially if you're gonna go up against the Elite Four, where you don't get to switch out Pokemon in a box. You have to go against four trainers and then the champion five total without switching anyone. So I, I needed diversity, that's, that's key. And so I was hunting down one Pokemon who had been ignoring this far. One of the greatest Pokemon in all of Platinum, Garchomp. And with Garhales on the team, I felt super confident that I'd be able to get this done. The next few hours I was distracted because Twitch chat kept telling me stories about their long distance relationships. I had 200 people donate last night, I checked. 200 people sent in a story about cheating or getting cheated on. But I wasn't surprised because of that that I threw away my Venusaur in a stupid misplay. That checks out. The next fight was one of the hardest in the games. Before the seventh gym, you have to fight Trainer Luda on Iron Island, who has a Guts Ursa Ring. I'm Luda, I'm a furry, rough. Anyways, nice to meet a fellow furry. If it's all right, I'd like to challenge you to a battle. That was weird. Guts again, if they have poison or burn on them, they'll, they'll have double attack. And it took Clint, who had been with us since the start to take him down. Like I said, this is the run. 
I only lost to Claydol, who I honestly hate Claydols. I don't know why I, I even had him on the team. I think I was just out of spots. Losing him wasn't too bad, and the fight went way better than I thought it would. The seventh gym saw the loss of our Empoleon, who had carried us with his really good typing. Steel Pokemon, ROP as fuck. That is cringy. At this point in the game, you have to fly to every single lake and fight one of the commanders in Team Galactic because they're doing some weird plot to take over stuff. I don't really know the story. Who cares about the stories in Pokemon? And I was also at the end of my marathon. All of this had been done in about 16, 18 hours of streaming, and I was super tired at this point. And Twitch chat does not ever let me forget every time I'd messed up. And so I was just trying to power through this last portion after 15 failed runs, three months in 200 plus bands. And I could not have gotten less lucky. You see, every Ludlock I've done has been capped off with a Dragon Dancing Gyarados. It's super OP and allows me to get out of tough situations I normally wouldn't be able to. And unfortunately, it was the end of Gyarados on this run. But I had little time to mourn because this was the first trainer and I had way more Pokemon I had to fight. And Twitch chat at this point thought that they were better than me at Pokemon, so I had people backseat gaming me. Especially Tyler. Tyler G 2018, I love your suggestion of Flare bl Blitz in the Sun. It's really smart. The Sun does increase the power of Flare Blitz. It's 2x damage. Really, really, really thoughtful there. Now, I would like to jump in for a moment on this conversation, just to tack on a little bit of concern on the speed of Crobat. Obviously have to consider their moves as well here, Tyler. You know, you know what, let's let's actually have a fun little activity. I'm, I'm gonna save a state here. This is not me playing right now, this is Tyler. Tyler, we're, we're gonna go ahead and run your play real quick. I'm gonna click Flare Blitz, uh, and, and when it doesn't work, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ban you. Uh, but if it does work, uh, I'm gonna give you my channel. So again, we just wanted to know whether or not you considered any of that going into this fight here. Don't worry, Tyler was eventually freed, but Gyarados was gone, and I needed to find a new carry. And so I had a new strategy that I'd been holding on to until this point. You see, you can plan specifically on what Pokemon you want to get. Because of the duplicate clause, you can catch every single Pokemon available in a certain area, except for maybe a Dratini. And because of that, when you fish in the lake where a Dratini exists, if you run into other Pokemon, you can just ignore them because you've already caught them in a different area. It's not cheating, it's strategizing. And that's exactly what I did to get myself the Dratini and a Lapras. And after 30 hours of playing Pokemon in a marathon, I had one fight before going to bed. Look, it wasn't great, but I still had a Lapras, a Garchomp, a Dragonite, and my box was mostly just shitty Water-type Pokemon. I filled up the squad with some random Mons who didn't last long, but my half-assed team would take on the hardest fight in the game so far. It's a double battle against Jive Time and Wolfie. If you don't know, these aren't just two random trainer names. They're named after the former world champion of Pokemon VGC and the coach who carried me in the Pokemon tournament where I ended up winning against all the other trainers. Yeah, that should kill the Blissey, I think. Both of us combined. And then this also could do some major damage on the Tyranitar. Wow. I knew that you had low defense, but fuck, you're weak. You did great, soldier. You did fucking great. Oh, you got the wrong guy! <gasps> you have more Pokemon! <gasps> I didn't know you had more Pokemon. All of a sudden, this got kind of bad for me in a way. 
Oh, you fucker. You fucker, you tried to take me out quick, didn't you? Get absolutely boomed! <gasps> oh, he's dead! Yeah! Okay, I thought it was still gonna go. I thought there was another pearl Pokemon. The big three survived, oh, but God. losing the other Pokemon left even more holes in my team. And even the three OP Pokemon, Lapras, Dragonite, and Garchomp, wouldn't be enough to beat the game. Especially since they're super weak to ice, and the next gym, uh-oh, is an ice gym. So I had a new plan. I went to the far reaches, the far corners of the Sinnoh region, and used my last available locations to build somewhat of a viable team. And to my surprise, I kind of pulled together a decent ragtag squad. Even without Dragonite and Garchomp, because they were weak to ice, I didn't keep them in my team, I didn't lose a single Pokemon on the 8th gym. And the only thing left to do was beat Team Galactic and then the Elite Four. And I just had one goal, keep the big three alive. Dragonite, Lapras, and Garchomp can do this if I have three good supporting squad ca- <sighs> I, I just can't have nice things. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Well, I, at least I got Magnezone, who was a great addition to the squad. Steel Electric type, again, steals OP. I ran through Team Galactic Space without much problem and went to the Dimension Zone. This is actually why I love Platinum. The Dimension is one of the coolest things I have ever seen in any video game. The thing about the Dimension area is you have to do a battle against Atrioc. And in this game, not only do you have to fight Atrioc's team, which is super hard, but he also has a Dialga in Palkia. So you have to beat Dialga and Palkia, and then you fight him again, and he has his full team. So you basically have to fight eight Pokemon back to back to back. Not only that, but the level cap was 60. You have to keep in mind that I have a level cap. 60 is the highest level I was allowed to be, but his legendaries are six levels higher. I can't raise my Pokemon to that level, because then I would sweep everything after that. Uh, okay, fire type. Let's think about this intelligently. He could nasty plot, but that's okay. I'll switch to Garchomp, who should one-shot Houndoom. Flash Cannon super effective against Ice. Should kill. Unless he's sashed. Which he probably is, actually. All right, let's see. Is Atriox AI super stupid? And is it going to heal him? Oh, what? Shocking turn of events. Okay, Zapdos down. That's the biggest threat on this team. We're not out of the woods just yet. All right, here's the position I'm in. This Honchkrow has superpower. Honchkrow's base speed is 71. Magnezone's base speed is 60. I'm two levels higher. So if I'm faster with a naughty nature, Thunder is even more effective, but I don't want to risk Peepo. So what's the smartest play? I either switch to Garchomp, and then he superpowers. Garchomp takes it. It lowers his attack and defense by one. Then I can switch into someone like Timchar, excuse me, not Timchar, or, or Lapras. Who can Ice Beam and kill with that minus one attack. That was crazy. That was crazy stupid. I can't think of a worse move in that position. I dramatized the dumbest decision I've seen anyone ever make. I wasn't trying to fuck around at this point, so after beating Atrioc, you meet with Giratina, who's a level 70, and I did not want to fight someone 10 levels above me, so I just used my Master Ball to catch him, and I would save him in the PC for later. The only thing left was Victory Road and Elite Four. We lost everything. We lost Garchomp. And Lapras. In fact, I lost every single Pokemon that brought me to this point. This is not the journey of six beautiful heroes who lead me to the end. This is a live video game version of Theseus's ship. And the entire ship that had brought me to this point had every single part of it replaced. And somehow, I had to go through the biggest storm that there exists in all of Pokemon, the Elite Four, with a brand new team. 
I had exhausted every single route. I'm not allowed to get more Pokemon. The only options were the Pokemon in my box. And I had to somehow make the Avengers out of these shitty ass Pokemon. And so that's when I ended up with a Tentacruel, because he's a big tank and can set things up. A Wishcash, who has Dragon Dance. Spiritomb, who's ghost type and can be swapped in against a fighting or normal type. Starmie, as a really high special attacker. Gurmy, who is a beautiful tanky bug type Pokemon. And Love Disk. Because it's, it's fucking Love Disk. It's kind of funny to win with Love Disk. Somehow, these six Pokemon were going to be the six heroes who helped me beat the Elite Four and the Champion. And you have to keep in mind, if they all died, I would have to start over. Protect, hoping that he doesn't get low enough. Okay, don't. I think this is good. You use the best. Fuck! Fuck you! God damn it! He literally only has rest left. I can actually just farm six of these. Alright, second Elite Four member went phenomenally. I mean, that just went great. Oh! It's not over yet. This Cyndaquil's a level five with Endeavor. Oh, this is terrifying. I have no reason to be this scared. Does he have Quick Attack? Okay. Oh my god, what a cheesy fucker. Dude, he's such a chat. What the fuck? Oh, fuck. Wait, that's super effective. No! All oh, right. Yeah, that could have been done a while ago. That was that was bad by me. Admittedly, that was a little bad and and an unnecessary stress were had by was had by all. I apologize. Um that was that was that was crazy. That was fucking crazy. Six dragon dances. You've beaten the Elite Four. All right, GG. Oh. There does remain the champion. 
I should warn you, the champion's stronger than the Elite Four. Step through the final door for your final battle. Oh, God, Cynthia. Fuck me. Fucking hell. Alright, boys! It's been three and a half months. 238 people are currently banned in my chat. For my terrible Pokemon gameplay over 15 failed runs. Cynthia, the final boss of Platinum. Mogul Platinum. She's just literally her, but better. With a level 78 Garchomp as the crown piece. Now, Moonblast, I'm hoping will kill Spiritomb. I'm definitely faster. This is a love disc in an Elite Four run, which is... I don't know how we ended up here. Stupidity, actually. Yeah, I know the answer. It's stupidity. Please kill. Please kill. And it's a great start! Okay. That, I mean, if, if we're just... If this is your game plan, then I'm kind of down. Um, if you're going to be using that shitty move... Oh... The AI is scared of lowering the special attack. Okay, Roserade is at the lowest special attack possible. Now minus six. I don't think Leaf Storm will even get rid of my sub. Look, I, I know I said I wasn't going to go for this. And by this, I mean Dragon Dancing. But this is just such an easy loophole I found by forcing out Leaf Storms. It's almost beautiful in a way. I've made Rosa Raid suck so much. Doing this exact back and forth baby bullshit for almost four months now. It's gotten so bad that I had to ban 237 of my viewers, and maybe it's not Tom Brady and the New England Patriots in overtime running it in the right side against the Atlanta Falcons after being down 28 3 at half. But I couldn't be happier that tomorrow I don't have to play this shitty fucking game. And that not only will I not have to play it, not only do I get to unban everybody who got banned, but I'm officially the first person in the world to beat this video game. With a fucking love disc! They're getting unbanned! Welcome back, boys! Welcome back to the channel. Claps and chat for your fellow comrades who died along the way. Many people faltered, but we still fucking won, baby. They fucking beat the Elite Four. And that is how I became the first person ever to beat Pokemon Mogul Platinum, not only beat it, but beat it while nuzlocking it, all with the fucking love disc. If you guys want to play this game, by the way, you can. It's available to everyone right now. It contains a bunch of cool little Easter eggs. You can play as me. You can go against my rivals, uh, Clevin, Cutie. You can fight Team Galactic's head, Atrioc. A bunch of my roommates are in the Elite Four, Slime, Aiden, Nick, uh, and Neep. Uh, it's, it's a really fun game. Uh, it's also really hard. If you thought that I was just a terrible Pokemon player, I challenge you to try to beat this while nuzlocking. All the rules are available in the description as well. Uh, good luck.